Good morning. Welcome to Morning Devotions with the community of St. Andrews and Glenwood. My name is Becky Tibaldi, and I will serve as the leader today. If you're new to this service, know that you can welcome to participate fully. We're recording this so that others can access it at a time convenient for them. May I have two volunteers today? I'll volunteer. I will. Thank you. And Ed. And Ed, awesome, thank you. Let us begin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in this power of his spirit, we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. By what we have done and by what we have left, we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. <clears throat> so today we're reading from St. Benedict's Toolbox. We're reading from page 61 to page 63. Um, discussing Benedictine stability. Stabilis is derived from the Latin word stare, meaning to stand up, to stand or to be still. From this comes the figurative meaning to be firm, to stand fast, to endure, to persevere, to be rooted. Stability also means to remain, abide, be united with, live in, dwell, or stay with. The essential feature is resting on a solid foundation, 
fixed by strong and unshakable roots. In a nutshell, stability is the action of remaining steadfast and faithful to the situation in which God has placed us. It is persistently sticking with the situation, with people, and with God. Monastic stability, as described by Benedict and practiced by Benedictine men and women, is first and foremost a commitment to a place and a group of people in the belief that it is this place and these people who will help them find God. English Benedictine Basil Cardinal Hume wrote of this stability, we give ourselves to God in a particular way of life, in a particular place with particular companions. This is our way. In this community, with this work, with these problems, with these shortcomings. The inner meaning of stability is that we embrace life as we find it, knowing that this and not any other is our way to God. While rector of a parish in New Jersey, a committee of wonderful parishioners and I introduced the rule of Benedict to a congregation in a seven week program. An illustration of what stability looks like in real life situation came out of this project. Purely as a matter of scheduling, John and I were going on a pre-planned weekend cross country ski venture. I had arranged for Sister Shane Margaret Fenlin then a novice sister from the nearby Episcopal convent of St. John Baptist to preach on the second Saturday of the program. The topic was Benedictine stability. Unknown, from me, unknown to me, Sister Shane was at the point in her novit when she needed to decide if she would take her first vows at this community. She later explained to me, I thought God had a great sense of humor asking me to talk about stability when I wasn't at all sure I even wanted to remain in this community. But it was that call to preach about stability that moved her to remain and to take her first vows. Stability is saying yes to God's will for us in the place where we believe God has placed us and with the task we believe God has given us to do. In this, we follow Jesus, we embrace who the task that God gave to him. Benedictine stability is as countercultural in our day as it was in Benedict's. Our, cultural, our culture says, don't get tied down, keep your options open, be free. If it doesn't work, whatever it is, bag it, go on to something or someone else. Stability takes a different approach. St Stability is a promise to remain where we are, with the people with whom God has placed us. Stability is to be fully present, knowing that Christ is at our side to help us. Stability recognizes that there are times when God may place us in a situation not so much for what we can personally get out of it, but for what we can give to others. A life formed by stability has both exterior and interior dimensions. The exterior dimension is remaining faithful and connected to a place, relationship or situation. The inner dimension is what Esther DeWall calls stability of the heart, an interior resting in God that is constant even though our physical homes, our jobs, circumstances of our lives may change. In our stability, we accept where we are because we believe God placed us there and is with us in every part of life. Where I am is important and counts because it is where God wants me. This acceptance strengthens both inner and outer stability. Stability and living in the present moment. Your Benedictine practice for this chapter is to be in the present moment, right where you are, reading this book or tending to an interruption in your reading. How's it going? If you forgot, just begin again. Here we'll look into a way to live at the present moment that draws on the interior dimension of stability, the stability of the heart. Our God is Henry Nowen, a priest and writer. 
Father Nowen went through a period of time when his life felt disjointed. The peace parts of lecturing, traveling, counseling, and spiritual life did not feel unified for him. And for him, this was exhausting. Further anxiety came from feeling that every speaking engagement had to be perfect, a new performance. Like Father Nowen, our lives have many peace parts. We can feel like we're in an old movie with the action sped up as we chase from one disjointed activity or responsibility to another. We can be doing one thing as we anxiously think about the next. We can be driven by the demon of perfectionism too. All this draws us from being really present to the very moment that we are in, just like Father Nowen. Nowen discovered that what he needed was an inner stability that would be constant even when he was on the go. No matter what he was doing, this inner stability would be like the center of a wheel holding all parts of the wheel together. For now, in this inner stability was the stability in God. Now I see I was all mixed up that I had fragmented my life into many sections that did not really form a unity. The question is not, do I have time to prepare, but do I live in a state of preparedness? When God is my only concern, when God is the center of my interest, when all my prayers, my reading, my studying, my speaking and writing serve only to know God better and to make him known better, then there is no basis for anxiety. No one then described how this inner stability would bring him acceptance and peace wherever he was or wherever he was doing. Whenever I'm home or at a hotel, in a train, a plane, an airport, I would not feel irritated, restless, or desirous of being somewhere else or doing something else. I would know that here and now is what counts and is important because it is God himself who wants me at this time and in this place. This is an expression of living in the present moment and finding God in daily life. Two important themes of stability and of Benedictine spirituality. Stability asks us to live in the present moment and to accept and respond in love to whomever and whatever God has given to us. Stability is not just saying, oh, well, I can't do anything about this, so I might as well accept it. Stability is actually wanting the situation we are in because we know we can find God in it, regardless of how difficult it might be. And so stability asks us to approach each thing we do as a way to know God better. Whether or not we feel God's presence, we trust this presence is with us. Underlying all external and internal stability is living with Christ at the center. The entire rule points to Christ, Benedict says, prefer nothing to the love of Christ. 72.11. With our eyes on the Lord, we can remain where we are and respond in love. Thoughts? It's a lot to digest. Very challenging. really enjoy the thought of resting in God no matter where we are that that is just so comforting makes me feel much more comfortable I like the idea that you can can find and live into an inner stability irrespective of whatever is happening around you externally. Or whichever situation you find yourself in, it's kind of reassuring to know that that's kind of part of the plan for you. I think there's a balance of knowing when to stay with something because it the stability is important and knowing when to move away. That's a 
stain can be more damaging at times. Yeah. Makes me want to think we ought to do now and next. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Wow. I really like the view of, of the center kind of as the, this, the pivot point and God being the center. But some, the visual is just sticking with me on that. Also like that phrase, prefer nothing to Christ. I know I'm guilty of uh, always thinking ahead to the next thing, you know? And then the perfectionism, that's another thing I'm guilty of, you know, just let it go. Let it go, let God take care of it. That's hard for me. Mine is staying in the moment. I'm always one step ahead of myself so it's difficult for me to pull it in and say nope you're right here right now yeah yeah i was thinking of a friend of mine that just uh flew to ghana and her facebook post of the grueling trip of, over there and the hours of waiting between flights and i'm like how the heck does she do that her she has an amazing ministry in ghana that she goes, probably didn't go last year, but goes every year. And it's clearly that's the thing that keeps her driving to get there, but the hours and hours that it takes are unbelievable. I'm Big Waterloo is the computer. You know how horses are afraid? Know if you're afraid of them? Well, Ooh. computers do too. <laughs> and I just keep hoping that the problems will go away. Just, I don't want to, I don't know how to deal with them. I don't want to deal with them. And reading the stability was a great encourager for me. Gave me a sense of purpose instead of wandering. Copiers are the same way. If you talk badly to them, they, they get you back every time. <laughs> That's funny. That's a good chance. I got that from John Alden. <laughs> He's got lots of good, good nuggets like that. Any other thoughts before we continue? <clears throat> So how will this lead us for the rest of the day or how, how will we incorporate this for the rest of the day, you think? Settle down and be calm. Accept where I am. I think I'm gonna to try to rest in God today. Good. All right, Bob. You are God. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in English praise. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory the eternal son of the father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. 
bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Go before us, Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor, and further us with your continual help that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name. And finally, by your mercy, attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Are there any prayer requests or thanksgivings today? For all those suffering from COVID and those who care for them. For Terry and the situation in Afghanistan with the people that are being left there that have aligned themselves with the United States. Ed and Sandy. Any Thanksgivings? I'm thankful for this group. I'm thankful for my health. Family and friends. What we're learning from Benedict. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen. Let's see if we can end recording here.